Hi there, I'm Kathy from Applicate Corner, and today we're with the lovely and talented Miss Debbie Homer Hoffines. And Debbie is a dear friend of mine, and she has agreed to share a wonderful project. We worked together a few months back, and I fell in love with one of her samples. She had a beautiful scarf done with yarn mm -hmm. on the embroidery machine, and I just loved it. And I have asked her to share that information with us today and she is here to do so. Hey, it was so fun to be back with you. Oh, oh thank so you fun. so much. It's thank great you. to be here. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take, I think we have, I didn't really count these, Kathy. Mm -hmm. What do we have, seven? I think there's seven. seven different Thank yarns, mm -hmm. and she has picked out the most incredibly gorgeous <laughs> yarn. Oh my gosh. And you know, I think you have a picture that will be able to see yes. these all laid out. Yep. So seven different yarns, and we're going to just lay them down on top of our Wet and Gone Tacky. Awesome. Now, Wet and Gone Tacky is mm -hmm. a water soluble, mm -hmm. so, and it has a sticky base. So what we've done is we just peeled the paper off. And now we're going to lay the yarn onto the sticky holding it in mm -hmm. place. And we have it taped down yeah, we do. on the table. Right. So it'll be easy. So you just tape this down so it'll kind of hold secure. Now, understand that we're just making a sample. So if right. you were normally going to make these, Kathy, I like to make mine about 72 inches long. Okay. We decided that we wanted to have like a six inch fringe on each end. So yes. we're just going to make a miniature to show you so that we can get it done in time recent yeah. so that yeah. it won't take so long. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have our six different yarns. Now, mm -hmm. I will tell you that people that are very um, anal about what they do will want this to be absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. And this I'm is a project. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's why I'm telling you, dear. <laughs> this is a project uh, yeah. that we don't want our perfectionists yeah. to come out on because really the most imperfect is the better this is going to look. Right. All right, so Kathy, we started laying these down. Mm -hmm. You take your scissors okay. and just cut. Yeah, just give us enough fringe and hold on to those ends so we don't lose them. Now we've got our balls of yarn on the floor and we've kept them, we've got them in a basket mm -hmm. so that they kind of stay together. I think probably the biggest thing about this, Kathy, is not to stretch the yarn as you're laying it. Okay. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna leave our fringe down here. And I just kind of pat mine down and then I'll kind of pull to kind of make sure that it's fairly straight, but again, mm -hmm. not stretching it. Now you can decide how thick you want this. And it depends on what you're gonna use this yarn, I mean this mm -hmm. scarf for. So if you were going to just do this as an embellishment scarf, you probably don't want this really heavy. Yeah. Now, these yarns are gorgeous. I mean, we've got some that's got little circles in it. We've got mm -hmm. this mohair. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of gorgeous textures and colors in this yarn. So now we'll go ahead and cut okay. it again. We're just gonna keep adding this across. Now, I will say that we've drawn a line across here because we want this to fit inside the hoop because mm -hmm. you said you would like for this to be done on the embroidery machine. Mm -hmm. Now, Kathy, when I've done these in the past, I have done free motion stippling mm -hmm. on the whole entire scarf, or even straight stitching will mm -hmm. work also. Absolutely. But I've taken the inside of the hoop and laid this down. And I don't know if the camera will be able to see our line mm -hmm. that we've drawn here or not, but yeah. I didn't want you to waste any more of this beautiful yarn than right. you absolutely had to. Okay. So we really only need to fill this section right, right here because we're gonna put this in the machine and let the machine do the stippling for us. And you can use um, just a water soluble or a, a heat friction pin or something right. like that to, to draw the outline of your hoop. And of course this can be done on a, on a sewing machine. That's I just exactly wanted right. our friends to be able to do it um, on an embroidery machine. And we'll tell them how to do both of mm -hmm. this just so that you'll be able to see. So I'm gonna just lay this out of the way again. And like you said, some, you could do a, a narrow scarf just That's for exactly an accent right. or embellishment, or yes. you can do a, a wide scarf depending on the size of hoop that and you And so if we were gonna make fabric with this, which we talked about a little bit earlier too, Kathy, that oh, fabric yes. is beautiful. Yes. 
And I think I shared a piece with you when you I was showing you my samples. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll have Eman take some uh, pictures of these, yeah. of our samples and we're all done here of um, what I've already accomplished with these. Um, taking and making your own fabric squares to put in your quilt blocks or in a table runner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've even made fabric out of doing the same method and made this darling shrug jacket for my daughter. Oh. So there's so many fun things to do with. I've done placemats. I mean, there's just... The sky's mm -hmm. the limit. And also think about those of you that are knitters and crocheters, all that stash of yarn. Um, yes. Neither one of us have stashes, right? <laughs> Closet's full. Yeah, right. Yeah. And all those leftover ends of our balls of yarn that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many fun things you could create with us. Well, how pretty it would be to, to create a fabric square or a panel oh of gosh. fabric and to make yourself a tote bag for uh, your knitting or crocheting yarns and idea, needles Kathy. and looms and that sort of great thing. Great idea. It, so, so cute. Now, these yarns are beautiful. It's hard to find yarn that has different textures like this. Mm -hmm. um, you really do have to go to specialty knit shops to yeah. come up with gorgeous yarns like this because if you just use plain Red Heart yarn or, or just plain mm -hmm. yarn, from your local craft stores. I mean, what's gonna make this so gorgeous is all of the different textures right. and different yeah. yarns that are in this. It just makes it stand out. And this is like, gonna be- Like you pointed out, this one oh. has some little loops and circles and just beautiful motion. And See, this, this one, one almost looks like a ribbon. Yeah, and this one right here, the it, it's almost variegated. There are thick spots and thin spots and it's just, it's gorgeous. And the colors, gorgeous. oh my gosh. I went crazy when I saw this. I have to <laughs> stop at this yarn shop for sure before I leave. We'll have to run down there. <laughs> okay, so we're just filling in. And we're not going to make this real thick and heavy because this yarn is really just so beautiful. It will make a darling accent for a cute outfit. And we not don't have very far to go. I like the open, open weave. Look. I do too. Very much so. But they can make it thicker if they would Oh, like you bet they thicker. could. You bet. Now there's one right there. There's we just need to needs, pull yeah. a little bit because I think I just snagged it on my finger. There, there you go. go. Now, it doesn't matter if you have little holes like this, but also if you wanted to make this heavier, Kathy, you could come back and just lay single strands down here if you were worrying about covering that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think the way we're doing this is going to be just beautiful. And you know, Debbie, I know that you have done this with your grandchildren and even with your grandchildren's friends. You know what? This is a great project, Kathy, to do with those grandbabies. And I'll tell you why, because they get to sew till their little heart's content. Mm -hmm. And that's when you would actually do these on the machine. But yes, they've made them for their little friends. And what great gifts it is to do and how mm -hmm. fun they have. So, Kathy, we've basically filled in mm -hmm. our spot that we drew with our hoop. It's beautiful. So we don't have to waste any more. Mm -hmm. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, the yarn beautiful. is spectacular. All right, so I will tell you now, we've already cut another mm -hmm. piece this size. And if you're doing your scarf, of course, it would be like 72 inches long. So mm -hmm. you'd have your bottom piece and then you'd cut one for the top. So let's go ahead, Kathy, and take our piece that we've cut. And we're gonna just peel off now. When you're doing a 72 inch scarf, whatever you do, Kathy, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you this because I've done it, <laughs> do not peel that whole top <laughs> off that 72 inch long piece and think you're going to flip that up so yeah. perfectly lining that all up. It will not It'd happen. Be like doing wallpaper. <laughs> and why do you think I know that? Oh my gosh. So just what you're doing, you're just gonna kind of peel back just like you were laying, like you said, wall yeah, paper yeah. or contact paper. Mm -hmm. And just enough to just kind of expose mm -hmm. the sticky because see one of this is side is sticky where this is just the protective right. coating on it. So we're just gonna take and come over here, Kathy, and line mm -hmm. this up. And we know exactly where it needs to go because mm -hmm. we're just gonna line up with where we started. Whoops. <laughs> well, that's all right, you're doing just great. Okay, so then just reach underneath there and pull that paper off. Now, I'm lucky because I have four hands instead of normally only having two, so that makes it very nice. Can be done with two, but okay. yes, having a can. friend to help us it makes it nice. look very good. Okay, so we got a little twist right here, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's not on our yarn anyway. And 
Kathy, this is all going to wash out. That's right. That's so it doesn't right. make any difference. Right. So just go ahead so and there we go. There we go. Pull that off. This is a water soluble stabilizer. All we're doing is having this stabilizer just to hold our yarn into place mm -hmm. so that we can actually sew it all together. So it doesn't really matter that we have yep. a little tuck there, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually hoop this up. Mm -hmm. But Kathy, let's just go ahead and remove our tape that we have here and hopefully it doesn't take anything off your beautiful table. And we'll move this off. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this up. So you've got the yarn, mm -hmm. it's sandwiched in between our two layers of the wet and gone tacky. Now, Kathy, if you didn't have an embroidery machine or you right. wanted those grandbabies to do this, mm -hmm. you can literally take and just sew straight lines. Now, there's a great attachment that comes with all of your sewing machines and it's called a quilter's guide. So what that is, is it looks like a little um, bar and it's probably about four inches long. It's a little metal rod that has this funky little metal ski on the side of it. It slides into the back of your walking foot mm -hmm. and that makes it so that you don't have to sit and draw those lines all the way across. Yeah because you can slide that little bar over to your needle. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted your stitching to be a half inch apart or three quarters of an inch or an inch, you would just measure from the needle over to that little funky little ski mm -hmm. that comes out, all okay. right? So if my grandbabies were doing these, they would just start and do straight stitches. Mm -hmm. And using that as a guide, they take that little uh, funky ski and follow each line okay. all the way across. Yeah. And then you would come back and you would do straight lines all the way across this way too. Okay. So you're actually doing both. Because mm -hmm. we want to sew this together secure enough that when we mm -hmm. wash all this out, that it'll still yeah. stay together, yeah, stay right? Together. Now, you can also do free motion stippling. Mm -hmm. So those of you that want to learn how to do free motion stippling, this is a great okay. project to do that. Because by the time you get... 12 inches wide by mm -hmm. 72 inches long, you will be a pro, you will have <laughs> it mastered, right. okay? You will also need to go to your local massage therapist to have a massage <laughs> through your shoulders, your shoulders. <laughs> Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're going to hoop this up in the hoop. We're gonna take it to this mm -hmm. incredible machine over here <laughs> and scan it and let it totally fill all mm -hmm. of it in with the stippling so we yep. can just sit there and watch it mm -hmm. do its magic. And we, right. we have shared this before in a video together, but if um, if any of our friends do not have a design um, in their machine or built-in stippling designs in their machine, they you may visit Applique Corner Fanatics and under the files section, there are free stippling designs there Fantastic. that they can use. And they, they would work beautifully. And you, you could even, stipple over the same area more than once. Oh yes you um, can. Different different color threads would be pretty. Just uh, use your imagination. The, the sky's the limit really. I've shared your applique mm -hmm. corner website on many occasions mm -hmm. because you also have the basting stitch yes. also. Yes, and so I've shared that many mm -hmm. times because there are a lot of machines that do not have the stippling or the basting right. stitch. So your yeah. website is wonderful to yeah. be able to go through that. Thank you. Now we're going to need to loosen this hoop, Kathy, quite okay. a bit because mm -hmm. we're putting quite a bit in there. Yeah. And it'd be easier to tighten it back up than trying That's to right. force ourselves to put this down inside here. And we don't want to stretch or pull that yarn. No, we don't want it distorted. So, so we're putting maybe, maybe our bottom not. hoop on the bottom. And we've got, um, you can see that we've gone and maybe we need to scoot this down just mm -hmm. a tad so that okay. it will get all the way to the end because we want to have to go back and do any of yeah. this by hand not when yeah. our machine will do it no. <laughs> <laughs> talk about lazy here i'll tell you what i'll hold kathy you okay. tighten all right so now that we have this inside the hoop and it took both of us and four hands we <laughs> did get did. this done <laughs> all right it's not that difficult <laughs> oh my for gosh. some reason we were bumbling yeah it. we're making it it's yeah. probably because we're trying to help each other that's right. it's like it's always easier by yourself <laughs> 
Okay, so you can mm -hmm. see that we have this longer, mm -hmm. and we're just going to move this down, but we're going to take this over to the machine now mm -hmm. and let the machine do its magic. Ugh, it's going to be gorgeous. Oh, yes. Gorgeous. So much easier. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy, now that we have this all hooped mm -hmm. up, Baby Lock has so graciously furnished you with this wonderful machine. They have the beautiful Baby Lock Destiny. And it truly is yes. a destiny. Wonderful features. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing. So mm -hmm. they, your audience needs to know though, Kathy, mm -hmm. that we have used a nine and a half by 14 inch hoop, right. which happens to be the largest hoop on the market. It is. And not everybody's machine, in fact, more than likely you're not, mm -hmm. unless you have this wonderful baby lock destiny, mm -hmm. will have this scanning feature. Right. Because we're going to scan this whole entire hoop, mm -hmm. and then we're going to fill it in with stippling, so that you're not here all night free motion stippling this by hand. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do it by hand. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to show you step by step on how to do this mm -hmm. on this wonderful machine. And, and Debbie, again, let's tell them you can do this in a smaller hoop. You can do this with um, design files of stippling mm -hmm. or you can freehand so you don't have to have um, this large of a hoop or this particular machine to do it but it sure is nice to be able to do it this That's way. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's do this on the machine and show okay. you how awesome this is. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select IQ Designer. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna notice a little bit different than the embroidery mode because the IQ Designer is gonna allow us to be able to scan this hoop, Kathy. Okay. So we'll select it and when we come up with the screen, it's going to let us create a line image or a fill. Mm -hmm. And this is not going to be a filled in embroidery design. Okay. We're going to pick these little two flowers right here and that's mm -hmm. going to allow to do the scanning. So let's go ahead and ask it to scan and it's going to say this frame's going to move and one thing I will tell you is that where this is 14 inches long, mm -hmm. you want to be able to move accordingly because sometimes I stick out a little more in front than I should, <laughs> but also to allow on the wall where that right. will go back and hit the wall and I'm sure you've had that same experience. I have, I have. <laughs> so it, it, ha it needs lots of room it to does. move around. It does, because this whole arm's mm -hmm. going to move. All right, we're going to go ahead and select OK. Mm -hmm. And it comes up, it says it's recognizing the hoop. Okay. And that means it's going to literally scan this whole entire area mm -hmm. of that hoop. This has the most amazing camera on it. I am just yes. always dumbfounded when I see how much it can scan and how perfectly mm -hmm. it can scan. It really does. It's very accurate. I've, I've used the camera a number of times if, if I'm stitching for something for just perfect placement. Ah, so. Great mm. feature to have. And when you've got a hoop this large, it's going to take a few minutes to mm -hmm. do it. Now I've been telling you nine and a half by 14 inches and if mm -hmm. you look at the bottom down here, it actually tells you that it's a 240 by 360 um, hoop. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have that in millimeters. All right, it's almost done. It's gonna probably go back up one more time. Maybe we won't, yeah. And when this comes up on this screen, Kathy, it's just mm -hmm. gonna be empty because we're not, we don't have any kind of a, a digital outline or anything right. up there. But that's the whole idea mm -hmm. is because we wanna fill that space. Okay. And there's our empty screen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a couple different options here. This is a pencil mm -hmm. and this is a fill line, but if we go into this page right now, mm -hmm. notice right here is that stippling. So we can go ahead and select that stippling and up above really doesn't have anything to do. We don't need to worry about that. We just want the stippling. Okay. I do try to pick a color that will actually show up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So don't pick a light yellow or a light green, right. something that's more bold that will stand out. Let's just pick a red. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, that doesn't mean that it's gonna be the color when it all stitches out, right. that's just to show on the screen. Right. You can stitch in a, a totally different color. Right. But I don't I don't know about you, but my eyes are, are not what they used to be. <laughs> so I, I, I appreciate dear. the brighter colors on the screen. <laughs> that's what I always say, go brighter. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> all right, see this little measuring cup? Mm -hmm. This is our fill. So when I click on that and I touch the screen, mm -hmm. 
Magic, it happens. Yes. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's totally filled in the stippling mm -hmm. on that whole entire hoop. Now, Kathy, how long do you think it would take you to do this by hand and free motion oh, this? A long time. <laughs> and we're just going to oh. let the machine yes. do it. Okay, so now that we have this filled in, the next question it's going to ask you is let's preview this. Okay. And when you preview this, it's saying, okay, this data is not going to be saved. Is it okay to continue? Mm -hmm. And people kind of get hung up on this. They're like, oh my gosh, it's got to be saved. Well, it's okay because it's just going to take you to the next screen. Right. So, depending upon when you've used your machine last, mm -hmm. it may be set on zigzag. Mm -hmm. You want to be sure that it is a straight stitch. Right. Because I don't think stippling would probably look so good as a zigzag no, stitch. <laughs> no, we definitely want a straight stitch. For, for All a right, stippling. and notice how it says run pitch. Mm -hmm. 2.5 will give you the length of the stitches. Okay. And again, here's our run pitch. Mm -hmm. Now, on your spacing, that's how close and how far apart that stippling is. Right. And there's a default on this that I believe is five. Mm -hmm. Let's just move this up until that little box goes black. Mm -hmm. Now, Kathy, if we don't like this, we can come back. But let's just see what this looks like at 5.0. And that's the way I explain it. It's, it's how far apart the loops are spaced, how right. loopy, how tight, or how Very loose good those definition, are. Mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Um, and when mm -hmm. we do that, then we can, it'll preview on the screen to see if we like it or not. Okay. So let's just go ahead and see what mm -hmm. it looks like. Now, I actually think that that probably looks pretty good mm -hmm. because where you're doing a scarf, you do want it to be closer together. Right. And especially if you were gonna do fabric, you would really wanna really make want sure it that it's nice and close together. So I think actually, that probably would look pretty good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Are you all right mm -hmm. with that? Absolutely. All right. So we need to set it. We're mm -hmm. telling it, okay, we like it. Let's go ahead and we're now going to convert this into an embroidery design. Okay. And there it is. There it is. So we're going to go ahead and click on embroidery. Okay. We're actually ready to stitch this out. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to take 14 minutes okay. to do this. It would probably take, oh my gosh. 45 minutes to do this That's by what hand. I was going to say. I was probably going to say 45 minutes to an hour. But you know what? In this case, we let the machine do the work, and you and I can sit back and have a glass of tea. And we can go have chocolate <laughs> That's right. or whatever. That's <laughs> Sounds right. like a great idea to me. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we're going to lower our feed dog and mm -hmm. let this little machine do all its magic. Amazing. Nice. Isn't this just amazing, Kathy? It is. I mean, this truly is magic mm -hmm. that it's, it can fill all this it's in. It's so quick. And and the consistency and the beauty of the stitches is just it's oh, beautiful. It's gorgeous. Perfect. Now, a couple things let's mm -hmm. talk about. First of all, on the needles. Mm -hmm. Because um, Floriani Chrome needles are so amazing. Um, this I would probably put in a 14 needle rather okay. than an 11 mm -hmm. just because we're going through two layers of sticky we're going mm -hmm. through all that yarn mm -hmm. so I probably would use a 90 14 the Florian and crumb needle okay. another thing too Kathy is we're talking about this we're going to tell you how to wash this all out when we get all done okay. but mm -hmm. if we were doing a scarf and we had our 72 inches long notice how up here and maybe if we take this out so the camera can actually see what we're talking about and let's maybe just move this over here. It's missing about two inches mm -hmm. right here. Right. So right. if we have this long piece to, to do, mm -hmm. and notice that we've got two inches down here at the bottom also. Right. So we could just re-hoop this back up, mm -hmm. making sure that this came to that two inches. And I just take right. and draw a line with my heat friction pen. 
so that Good I idea. know. And when you draw that line, Kathy, mm -hmm. draw a line across, then I'll even make a line coming down from the center of my hoop so I'll know where the center is yes. so that I'm keeping it straight with my hoop. Very smart. Very and then smart. hoop it back up again. Mm -hmm. And having this overlap, the stitches to go yeah. over the top of that, it's not going to really matter. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem at all because you wouldn't see the stitches when all of the stabilizer is removed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because when we take this through the process and the yarn fluffs all back out, you're not even going to be able to see the stippling. Right. So one thing yeah. I do want to show you though, because I really am in love with this machine and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to sound like a, a baby lock salesman, but um, <laughs> I... We do love the desk I, machine though. I do. <laughs> you and I both do. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, this machine is so accurate with the stippling on the back. And I'll have to tell you, when the Destiny first came out, that was the first thing I looked at mm -hmm. when we, the stippling on this new machine, because before what would happen is it would pull the top thread through and you'd have a little loop on mm -hmm. every place the stitch was. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's too fine for you to be able to see, but Kathy, if you look at this, the and back, see, the back is as pretty as the front. It's exactly yeah. right. And you don't have mm -hmm. any of those loops at it's all. It is absolutely perfect. The stippling yeah. is beautiful. And ladies, with this project, you, you do want to um, wind your own bobbin and use the same color bobbin thread as you do the, the Very top good thread. Point, Kathy. So. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for saying that. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to take care of this when we get all done because okay. if you're doing a scarf that's 72 inches long, mm -hmm. you will have 144 inches of stabilizer, <laughs> a wow. wet and gone tacky <laughs> that's going to need to be washed out. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to take this out of the hoop and of course we're going to cut off the excess. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of having any more than we need to. Right. Right. We're going to put this in our kitchen sink okay. and we're going to use Vaseline bath beads. Wow. Now, Vaseline mm -hmm. bath beads comes in, you, if you can find it mm -hmm. at your local um, store, wherever, mm -hmm. um, Vaseline bath beads comes in literally, they look like beads, Okay. or it comes in a powder form. Okay. And I um, hate to give brands, mm -hmm. but really, we have found it works the best, okay. the Vaseline bath beads. If you can find the beads, you need to take three beads and mm -hmm. put them in your, your water. Okay. And it's just lukewarm water, and you're going to really want to let it mm -hmm. sit all night long. Wet and Gone Tacky is a mineral base. Okay. That breaks it down so that you don't have um, all of that gluey, slimy mm -hmm. stuff going down your drain. Mm -hmm. When you get up in the morning, you're just going to have blue water. Okay. And so then you'll just take in the morning and just blot that out. Now, before I go on, though, Kathy, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you that if you can't find the beads uh -huh. and it comes in powder form, just use a half a cup. Okay. So a half a cup to your kitchen sink full of warm water. If they can't find, like, the Vaseline beads or powder, it is, um, <sighs> is another, do you recommend well, anything else? Calgon like? works good, but we mm -hmm. just found that Vaseline the works Vaseline so much works better. better. Okay. It does. It's, for some reason, it seems to um, solidify and break this down even more well, so. It's, it's good to know. Um, you know, they're going to want to do this beautiful project and then... We want to we want to give them all the information so they can finish. Writing. And you may, depending upon what kind of yarn you have, and here's another a good thought too: if you're mm -hmm. using yarn that's like 100% wool mm -hmm. or 100% cotton, you know, be careful because you could have some shrinkage. Right. So um, we talked about this earlier that yeah. if we wanted our scarf to be 72 inches, I'd add an extra five to mm -hmm. six inches just to be on the safe, on the side. safe side. And if you have 100% wool, you could end up with it looking more felted looking. So yes. you, um, don't use scalding hot water because you don't need to have hot water with wet and gone tacky. Just a lukewarm water is, is plenty. After we soak that overnight, making sure that this is totally submerged, we're gonna get up in the morning, we're just gonna blot it out. We're not gonna wring it out, we're just gonna blot it out. Okay. Take it over to our washer, and we're gonna add either three more of the Vaseline bath beads or a half a cup of the powdered form. Uh, and we're going to put it in our washer, lukewarm water again, on the gentle cycle. Gentle. Yeah. I will tell you that the washers with the agitators mm -hmm. work better than the new front loading ones that doesn't have it on the inside. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because the agitator seems to work it mm -hmm. out better. Maybe. Um, you may have to do it more than once if you don't have that kind of um, washer if you have one of the new ones. Yep. After it goes through the gentle cycle in warm water, 
You're going to take it and put it in your dryer on air fluff only. Air fluff only, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that will fluff mm -hmm. this beautiful yarn right back out to its yeah. original state. Definitely don't want to use heat on um, no. any wool. No, <laughs> no, for sure. Been there, done that. <laughs> uh, yes, so haven't we all. Now, when this comes out of the dryer, you're going to instantly know if you've gotten all the stabilizer out or not. You'll be able to feel, and if it feels nice and soft, but if it feels stiff or sticky, mm -hmm. you need to repeat the process repeat again. The process. Okay. Because there are some yarns that will hold on to the stabilizer more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, ribbon yarn especially. All right. Um, so you just may have to go through that whole process one more time. And do it again, let it soak again, mm -hmm. rinse it out and go through the process and then you'll have an incredibly beautiful, nice. beautiful scarf. Nice. So Kathy, here's mm -hmm. some samples and I think these are the samples that I showed you before when you they fell in love. Are. This is what started it all for me. <laughs> Just so fun and, and this again is totally different yarn than what you mm -hmm. used. Mm -hmm. And this is some of that ribbon yarn that I was telling you that kind of holds the stabilizer a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I actually had to do that uh, rinsing process twice on this because it just didn't all rinse out the first yeah. time. And you'll easily mm -hmm. be able to tell because it'll be kind of stiff, it won't be soft, and your mm -hmm. yarn really should get back out to its original state. So a um, couple of these, Kathy, um, on the one down here that uh, I made the scarf and then I just did some free standing designs of embroidery yeah. and burned them out with our cool heat craft tool and yeah. we may have to do that as another segment oh, sometime. Oh, absolutely will. Yeah, it's, absolutely. it's a lot of fun because mm -hmm. we can take any design and make it into free standing and then just sew it on with the monofilament yeah. thread. It's and this is just a little pretty. bag and, and it's just a simple little clutch just to show making the fabric mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I've just lined it with silk. And That's again, what I was so intrigued by that you, uh, I liked and, and wanted this um, sample as almost as if it was floating in air, very uh -huh. airy and breezy, um, but you can condense it and do that stippling so much closer and this is actually woven fabric. I'm, I'm just so impressed. And, and you so can't intrigued. really even see that stippling, can no, you? No, no. At all. Mm -mm. Now this was kind of fun because this was just a leftover mm -hmm. swatch mm -hmm. of fabric and I, I actually made the fabric and this is what I made the shrug jacket out of that I was telling you mm -hmm. about. And notice how this one's running both directions. I see so that. rather yeah. than running all my yarn in one direction, mm -hmm. as we've done on this, mm -hmm. I ran it this way. Then I went back and ran some nice. the other direction. And it's interesting because mm -hmm. when you look at this, look how one side looks, mm -hmm. but look how the other side looks. <gasps> wow. It's totally different, but yet it's the yeah. same. So this yeah. just happens to be the underneath, mm -hmm. and the other one happens Tell to me. be the top. But how beautiful it is. Yeah. And Kathy, feel how gorgeous that is. It feels just like wool fabric, it doesn't does. it? It feels like cashmere. It's so <laughs> soft. And so, so soft. to do quilt blocks mm -hmm. or to add this as to texture in any of your projects, just... Well, how pretty it would be, like you said, a, a vest or a jacket and, and one side could look this way or the inside of the lining could look, or it could be reversible. That's you exactly it right. Reversible. It's a lot of fun to do. Beautiful. And this was just a little swatch of how we put it together. Mm -hmm. Again, with the wet and gone tacky on both sides, and there's our little mm -hmm. fringe. Now, this is a little sample um, of a different yarn. Again, here's our yarn sandwiched in between. Mm -hmm. But this is a swatch of doing it on a regular sewing machine where maybe they don't have an embroidery machine or have an embroidery hoop large enough to do this project. You can easily just do it mm -hmm. on a regular sewing machine. This is just taking the width of the foot and sewing straight lines, but notice how I've gone in both directions right. to make sure that it's close enough. And this is done with free motion stippling <laughs> by hand. It's lots and lots of fun, but it is tiresome. <laughs> You'll wear off your shoulders too. And this instead of doing it with a machine. <laughs> this one's so pretty. It has uh, sequins. In and the yarn the, came the, like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, I did not add yes. all those sequins. <laughs> Some added bling there, and this one's so pretty. This one also has the yarn with the sequins, but it, it has does. this yarn, has little pom poms. It does, it looks like a little it. popcorn yarn, yes. is what it looks yes, like. Yes, little popcorn, exactly. Exactly. But this is a good example of showing the different textures and different types of okay. yarn, and to look and to find those that are a little out of the ordinary 
Um, right. Boy, well, what a it's difference. so it's so personal. You can you can find something for any style, any uh, young person, old person, whether they like something uh, monochromatic or something very bright and colorful or something toned down. It's just it's it's a perfect project. And also, as you said, you mm -hmm. need to decide if you want it to be just an embellishing scarf for a darling outfit that you have, mm -hmm. or do you want it to be a nice warm scarf to put yeah. around your neck to keep you warm for winter. Mm -hmm. Kathy, you've done a beautiful job on picking this yarn, and I think we counted, I think, what, uh, seven different yarns. Mm -hmm. And notice the bowls that you put in, because mm -hmm. if you put it in a five gallon bucket, it just doesn't, especially when you have that many balls of yarn, right. it won't pull off of the ball. And mm -hmm. so you just found these two great bowls that mm -hmm. we were able to set on the floor and pull the yarns off of. Um, You've done a great job in matching your thread, Kathy, to the yarn. And if you have thread that matches the yarn, then your stippling's not going to really show up. Right. Because you're going to have something to sew it together. Yeah. So, But one of the things that I wanted to share, Kathy, is that not a lot of people know that do machine embroidery, that machine embroidery thread is meant to always stand on its bottom and this meaning mm -hmm. the bottom. Okay. Machine embroidery should always be put on a thread stand. Um, a lot of people will run it horizontally on their machine, but what happens is it's not mm -hmm. been wound on the spool and spun in such a way such that a way. it will feed mm -hmm. off evenly and smoothly. Right. And it doesn't matter what kind of machine embroidery thread it is, they're all spun on a core they're mm -hmm. always meant to wind off of its bottom, meaning the thread standing mm -hmm. on its bottom. And that's what we've done here on this thread stand. Most of your machines nowadays come with a thread stand. This is easily removed, mm -hmm. comes off, you put it back on. Yeah. But that's why those thread stands are there for that thread to feed off of more evenly. That's good information. I have to say I have been guilty of putting some embroidery thread there in the past. and. And isn't it true that if, if your machine, if, if they happen to have a machine at home that doesn't have a thread attachment stand that attaches to their machine, isn't that something that's out on the market that they can they get can. separately? There's um, lots of different thread stands. Yeah. And think about, Kathy, your multi-needles. Exactly. You know, your multi-needle mm -hmm. machines, how does the thread always yep. fit on the machine? Yep. Always Stand on its bottom. Up. Right. So Kathy, if they don't have a thread stand that comes with their machine, there are many generic thread stands out there. There's um, some you can get that will actually just sit on your table mm -hmm. and then the thread will come up and it's, it has a nice big stand on it. I've even seen women where they take and put the thread on the table mm -hmm. and pull it up too, mm -hmm. but just make sure that that thread is always sitting on its bottom and pulling off. It will pull up mm -hmm. much cleaner, much smoother. That's, that's great information to know. Thank you. Well, gosh, Kathy, now that you've washed this out, isn't this the most incredible, beautiful sample? It is beautiful. You've got to be so beautiful. anxious to make the, <laughs> the big one now. I am. I very much am. And it just looks like these gorgeous threads are just floating. <sighs> and they're, it's, I love the open and airy uh, look. So. It's and to think beautiful. that we did this all on the machine mm -hmm. and the open airiness, and you can see if you really look in here, um, the stippling on mm -hmm. this, but I, I just think it turned out spectacular. What a gorgeous, gorgeous scarf this will make. And this okay. really goes to show you that these different textures of yarns um, has you so brilliantly picked um, mm -hmm. is absolutely the way to go when you make these and how many fun things and we didn't put our yarns real close together right because we wanted to have that mm -hmm. more open airy look but you absolutely could definitely mm -hmm. so if you wanted to do yep. a piece of fabric mm -hmm. then you would just add more mm -hmm. to make sure that was nice and full right. and that's what I'm anxious to do next I do want to make uh, fabric squares or, or panels of fabric and make you know tote bags or um, quilt squares or something like that with with texture. I'm, I'm so really looking forward texture. to it. Absolutely. Be beautiful. Okay. Well, this was fun, Kathy. I enjoyed you. doing it with Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um, this project and your talents and mm. your knowledge with us. We greatly appreciate it. Well, so. thank you. It's been fun to be with you, <laughs> my dear. You'll come again soon. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>